The bars just seems to be walking all over the joint. If they don't get any better, we'll probably end up scrapping it. How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Tonight we're going to start working on this shaft. This shaft's out of a big tree grinder. This shaft is out of a Vermeer 1000 horsepower horizontal tree grinder. The shaft is located at the end of the feed chute. It rotates a drum with multiple blades on it for grinding the trees and waste material. Customer brought it in. As you can see it's in two pieces. Uh, the last repair that was carried out on the machine. Customer noticed cracking around this radius here on the shoulder of the shaft. You can see someone's uh, machined it out and attempted to repair it using um, some sort of welding method. It hasn't worked. They generally don't survive after they've been fractured and then someone goes in and tries to repair them. This, the damage is already done. So the other side did completely fail. Uh, as it goes for what we need to do this shaft now, we've got a piece of 240 mil 4340 that the customer's brought in. We're going to turn that down so we've got some uh, machining to do, some key ways to cut, some threads to do. Yeah, that's about it. Righto, so this is the new piece of material the customer's brought in. It's 2.6 metres long, it's 4340. Uh, the original shaft was 4140, so we've gone a little bit better. Uh, still need a little bit of flex in the shaft, so I didn't want to go to anything too heavy or too extreme. It's a fraction over 9.5 bananas, that's 242 mil. This piece of material at the moment weighs 945 kilo. By the time the job's finished, we will essentially remove half of this total weight. Uh, the original shaft is ballparking 460 odd kilo. Right, so now we're going to set this thing up in the machine and um, get it all trued up and ready to go. Get a couple of steady bands on it, and uh, we'll start ripping material off it.
So at this stage we noticed the bar had a bit of run out in it. We did throw a dial on it to see how bad it was. It only seemed to be in one end. The rod was parallel and true the whole way down, except for the end of it. It started to walk around a little bit. So at this stage we weren't too concerned about the run out. There was still a lot of material to come off the rod. Uh, so we kept going with it. We're going to flip it in the machine. Once we flip the rod it really becomes noticeable.
So after flipping the bar and setting it back up in the machine, we noticed the run out was very bad at this stage. I did contact the supplier of the material and the customer to let them know what was going on and it was agreed we would continue machining in the hope that it would get better, but it didn't. Bad as that.
you might have noticed the bar's got a lot of run out in it. Uh, turns out the bar, doesn't matter how many times we reset, cut the center, reset a steady rest, uh, cut a new steady rest pad or anything, uh, the bar just seems to be walking all over the joint. Some of the reasons why the bar could be, um, could be like this could have been uh, it's got a bit of tension built into it from the manufacturing pr process. It either cooled too rapidly on one edge, the annealing process wasn't right, heat treating wasn't right. Could be a number of things. So now we're going to set up the steady again and um, see if we can do something with it. Righto guys, so we've been machining this piece of 4340 for the past day, roughing it down, getting it ready to uh, finish it out. The bar's pretty much got a banana in it. We've run into this before, it's never been this bad. So on every surface of the, of the bar, we've actually got five mil extra material to remove. So after I noticed the bar wasn't straightening out, I decided to leave material on so we could hopefully resurrect it or make it survive. But at this stage, um, yeah, we haven't gotten, it hasn't gotten any better the deeper we've gotten into the, into the rod. So after we noticed the piece of material walking around all over the joint, um, I did reach out to a few of the other machinists in the area, had a chat with them about it. We do bounce ideas and problems off each other when we do run into them. None of them had ever seen anything this bad before. We actually discovered the piece of material was um, not very good quality. The steel supplier did tell us that this was the end of a length of rod that had been manufactured, so that could have aided in the problems we were having. Righto guys, so you'll notice a bit of materials out of the machine. It isn't finished. Uh, we had the customer and material supplier come down to have a look at it. Uh, they all agree that the run out we're getting from the material is not acceptable and we need to do something with it. So it's going to be sent out for heat treatment to try and relieve the stress and resistance built up in the shaft. Uh, not very optimistic it's going to work, but we shall, we shall see in a week or so time when it comes back from heat treatment. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Where are you going? Oh, that's good. What am I saying? Are we going to do this every time? Yep. Ready? Yep. Did you just tell us how you're going, guys? Yep, whatever. Right. Probably better to see it on the other side. Over that way. This didn't work out well. Same size, same 
the broken shaft is, she's fucked. It's upside down. B940. Five, 940 kilo. By the time the job's finished. So we're just gonna stop fucking around and throw it in the machine. <laughs> it's pretty fucking straight considering. Miles. Um, fuck, I forgot what I was gonna say. It turned out it had too much Mitsubishi in it. <laughs> What's that? Swarf. That's my swarf. That's my favourite piece of swarf. <laughs> now you've lost it.